As a retouching educator, whenever I teach a class, half of the class was dedicated to teaching and remembering an overwhelming number of settings. As a beginner, I can totally understand how off-putting this can be. On top of that, you have to then remember what to do with those settings in order to retouch. What if you could dive right into retouching faster without needing to remember every little detail? This panel takes care of all those little settings so you don't have to remember them. It also provides education each step of the way so you can easily refer back to it if you get stuck. You can also use it like a quick retouching panel in case you only need a few adjustments or let it guide you through the entire retouching process. Each of these steps that the panel does is non-destructive so you're really not married to any decision you make. The panel also organizes and renames those layers for you so you don't have to wonder where everything you've done is. Think of it kind of like training wheels for Photoshop. This is a really great first step and complementary tool to a full infinite retouch panel for pros. So let's just jump into it and let me show you how it works and all the things you could do with it to make it completely customizable to your workflow. Here we have an image by our co-founder Stefan Kohler who is also a really great photographer. And let me go and show you what happens whenever you load the plugin for the first time. You will see infinite guy with the create button. But before we hit create, let me talk about a few things really quick. First of all, at the bottom here, you'll see the retouching tip of the day, which goes through different tips every single day. So please feel free to check it out and keep the panel open in case you find that very interesting and useful. Next, we have on top here, start and steps. Let's go and talk about steps first, because steps is actually individual steps that you can access at any point in time. So should you feel like you only want to execute a few steps of the plugin itself, like perhaps you only need a healing layer or Maybe you would like to only change the color of the iris or enhance the whites of the eyes or perhaps add some highlights in the hair or overall skin. You can do that individually simply by clicking on the buttons like actions and it sets up the individual layers for you. However, the main part of the plugin here is that under start, you will see that it has create. And before you hit the create button, I would highly recommend right clicking the create button. And then what happens is that when you do, you come up with this menu. You can actually disable or enable any step of the process that you want. So should you, for example, only need to access uh, frequent separation or healing, you can turn the rest off. Perhaps you don't need tanning on a specific image or anything else like vignetting or sharpening or what have you. You can individually customize your workflow to whatever it is that you are going for. So that's kind of interesting. For the time being, I will go ahead and turn them all on and go through them really quickly with you because the rest of the panel itself is accessing and letting it guide you through the process. So let's say you do hit create, it's going to follow this specific order, frequent separation, healing, inverted high pass, etc. And you can decide to cancel any step of the process you want or cancel the whole thing at any point in time that you want as well. So you're not really stuck in case you're halfway through and decide you don't want to finish the entire process. Now when I click on back um, and click on create, one thing that you'll find is that, as I mentioned before, the first step is going to be frequency separation. And the beauty of this is that it, first of all, uses facial recognition to create the specific settings that is best for the image. Because typically if you do frequency separation, um, and if you are used to it or have heard about it before, you do need to know what settings you have to use and you know that can be overwhelming. But what this panel does for us here is it automatically selects the tool, it automatically selects the radius and knows how to set it up for you and makes it super easy. It sets the layer. So all you have to do is begin working. Here the best part is that with every step, it has a description of it. When you click on this, it goes to a video that talks about it and also gives you a text write up of what to do next. So this way here, it says use a clone stamp tool to remove any flaws. Now it's automatically set to the clone stamp tool with all the settings up top already set for you. So you don't have to remember to change sample or your flow or opacity. And this is the biggest thing that I have to actually troubleshoot with my students is making sure that the each step is working correctly. This is all done for you. So it eliminates a lot of the user error that might happen. Now you can go in and actually, you know, use the clone stamp tool and then adjust whatever it is that you're going for. Now, this is just an example and I don't really need to actually retouch this image any further if I don't want to, but it goes to show you how it works. 
And the beauty of it is that each step has an individual video associated to it, so I don't have to sit here and go through every step of the process. Um, yeah, so that way you can just go to the next step. And if you already know how to use this, you can just hit next and keep on going. If you would like some education, you click on the video and read about it and it tells you how to do everything. So I typically will go ahead and remove any of these texture issues in case I want to remove any of those bumps on the skin or what have you. And if I want to refresh my memory, I'll click on the video and learn all about frequency separation and using this step of the process. Next, if I decide that I don't want to actually use this specific um, step, I can hit skip. And then it will just delete that frequency separation folder for us and go on to the next step, which is healing. So it goes to the order of operations. Now I have another layer set. The folder is already set for us and it goes to the spot healing brush automatically. And now it's easy for me to just remove any blemishes. Now the, again, this is a, I would say a beginner tool, but quite a powerful beginner tool because even for me, if I'm going through a quick retouch and I just want to say, heal something out really quick and do some frequency separation, I can use this tool in order for me to do that. And then it can be done. I don't have to fill around too much. And it is a time-saving tool, even for professionals in case they would like to use it. So I think this is very interesting because although, as I mentioned, it is a beginner tool, it has its purposes for everyone. I would say someone like me who's actually quite lazy and having to go through as many steps as um, required through retouching, if I don't want to go through that process, this can be quite helpful for that. Now let's say that I've actually done a few things and I, you know, like what I've done and I want to go to the next step, I simply click on next. In, and lastly, do you remember in the last step, I actually hit skip and deleted my frequency separation layer. But this time when I hit next, it will go to the next part of the process. Now I can keep on going through everything, but I'm just going to hit skip because I don't want to do this one. And again, for everything that you would like to learn about this entire workflow, just click on the individual videos and it does tell you what everything does in detail, which is provided for free within the panel itself which is also making this a really good educational tool for anybody who wants to learn about each of these little steps. Okay, so I'll hit skip for the meantime and keep on going. The anti-red, it shows you that it's removing any redness in the skin if I want to. Again, sets up my tool, automatically selects it, selects my settings for me that is recommended. And if you'd like to override it, perhaps you know a little bit about flow and opacity, you can easily increase the flow if you feel like you would like to go faster, and it gives you that control as well. Now, I'm not going to do that. As I mentioned, this is just for demonstration purposes on how this panel works, but I can just keep on hitting skip and it keeps anything that I want to keep and removes anything that I don't. Now, sometimes you might also see little sliders like for tanning. In case you would like to tan the skin, you would increase the slider and it basically will increase the tan or the warmth of the skin itself. And it uses a photo filter here, which then you can adjust automatically. So let's say, for example, I hit skip on this one because I don't want to tan skin. Maybe I want to contour a little bit here on the, the cheeks. I can hit next. I want if I want to keep that and so forth and so on. Finally, let's say you would like to cancel the entire workflow. Maybe you don't want to actually apply any of the things that we've done. If you hit cancel, it's going to say keep layers or discard layers. So for instance, maybe you want to stop in the middle of your workflow and you want to keep what you've done already. Then you can hit keep layers and then automatically keeps it for you and stops the process of going through everything from start to finish. And then if you'd like to do it again, but you'd like to modify your workflow, you can easily right click on the create button and turn on and off whatever it is that you like. So perhaps maybe I would like to turn off everything else except for a couple of things. Maybe I want to keep sharpening on and grain on. Let me go ahead and turn the rest off like this. And so what happens now is when I hit create, it's now going to go to the sharpening portion. As you can see here, it creates its own folder for you. So it keeps it non-destructive and in the order which is typically recommended by retouching workflow. Now, the best part is, is that has a slider for sharpening. So I can say, oh, I don't want that much sharpening, maybe just a little bit like that. And then say next. And then for grain, it allows me to determine how much grain that I want. And this is great because I could use this panel just as a finisher and decide that I only want to use it for sharpening 
and green, and then be done. And then when I hit next, it finishes it. And as you can see here, it keeps everything in a really nice workflow. So I don't have to rename my layers. I don't have to rename my folders. It's all there for me. Someone lazy like myself that wants to get done really fast, this is actually really great. So just to recap, you know, this panel can be used individually for individual steps at every part of the workflow. Should you not want to go through the guiding process or the create button, or you can determine what workflow you'd like and what to keep on or off. And in case you only want to use a few things, you can. And this panel can be many things for everyone. So I hope you found this panel useful. I personally think that even if you're a beginner, or someone who is advanced, you can use this for many different things. And in my journey, I've often found that even though I know so much about retouching, I learn so much from watching beginner videos and beginner education tips because sometimes along the process, you might miss things that you wish you knew to begin with. So I hope you found this useful and I can't wait to see what you create with it. Please join our communities at Infinite Tools and I can't wait to see everything you make and I hope this is very useful for you.